This is Linda Sadcast from ScrappersGuide.com here to tell you about the changes and new features of Photoshop Elements 8. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use Photo Merge Exposure. The Photo Merge Exposure tool is a great idea. Take two or three photos of the same view using different exposures, then blend them together into one seamless photo using the best of each. Here I have a photo that's well exposed for the Columbia Gorge Sternwheeler, but the sky is blown out. My other photo has a decent sky, it's a little bit dark but not too bad, but this part of the photo, the Sternwheeler, is very dark. Here's how to merge them together. Click on the thumbnail that is the best of the two photos and drag it to the left until it's the first thumbnail. I do this because I've noticed that the first thumbnail is always the base photo in the end result. Select the thumbnails by clicking on one and control clicking in Windows or command clicking on a Mac on the other one. Then come up to the file menu, choose new and photo merge exposure. You have three options for how to proceed. There's a manual tab and a choice of simple blending or smart blending. I'll show you all three starting with the manual tab. In the manual mode you need to drag the background photo that is the best to this area over here on the right. Then click on the other photo to make it the foreground. With the selection tool, this one right here, click and drag over the area that you want to bring over to the other photo. And here it comes over here. Let's zoom in just a little bit. You can see however that this is very jaggy along the edge and if I click on show regions you can see that it's even jaggier there. Now I'll deselect that and I'll move the transparency a little bit. So that helps some and I can click on edge blending but that doesn't seem to do a whole lot. I have never actually managed to make the manual mode work but I just wanted to show it to you. So let's go back to the automatic mode. This one usually works either the simple blending or the smart blending and in this case let's look at the smart blending. For the highlight details you can move the slider to the right or left to increase or decrease that. For the shadows if you want it to be a little bit lighter you would move it to the right. And for the saturation you can increase it or decrease it. This is looking okay but it's just kind of gray so I'm going to click on simple blending and suddenly that looks a lot better. This area is a little darker than I want but overall it's pretty good and I can fix the rest of this with quick fix. So I'll click on done. First I'll crop it. I'll get the crop tool, make sure I don't have anything up here in the options bar, no restriction and I'll click and drag a crop outline. Use my spacebar to reposition that a little bit, let go of the spacebar, let go of my mouse and click on the green check mark to accept it. Then I'll come up to my edit menu and choose quick fix. We'll lighten the shadows just a little bit and increase the midtone contrast and then click on the check mark to accept that and go back to full edit. And I'm very pleased with the results. This tool works well for skies but it's much more difficult to get a good merge of people photos. It's easy to get a halo effect like I have in this photo. If I zoom in close you can see that his lips right here, there's just a little bit of a haloing effect because he wasn't smiling exactly the same and his beard looks fuzzy. And in this case there's a little bit of haloing right here around this shadow. If you're a more advanced photographer with a tripod and know how to bracket your photos you might have better luck. If you're a point and shoot photographer try this method instead. Let's say you have a photo that has dark kind of contrasting shadows. Choose File, Duplicate to make a copy of the photo. Now press Ctrl J in Windows or Command J on a Mac to duplicate the layer in the Layers panel. Then open the Blend Mode menu at the top of the Layers panel and change it from Normal to Screen. Open the Layers panel Flyout menu and choose Flatten Image. Now you have a dark and a light image that are perfectly registered. Select both of the thumbnails in the project bin. Come up to File, choose New and Photo Merge Exposure. 
you can try simple blending or smart blending and in this case I'm going to use smart blending because I can desaturate it just a little bit and let's see if we want to make the shadows maybe a little bit less. Now we'll click done and take a look at our photo. The new photo is on a separate layer so I could even reduce the opacity if I wanted to. Here it is without the blending and here it is with it. So we could even reduce the opacity of this slightly maybe to around 80 percent and we have a very nice photo. So there you have some ideas on how to use photo merge exposure. If you enjoy learning about Photoshop Elements, you can find my DVD-ROM Learn Digital Scrapbooking with over six hours of training free inside the Photoshop Elements 8 box for Windows at Costco. It should be available starting about mid-October 2009. Look for my name, Linda Satgast, on the label. If you don't have access to Costco or Costco Online, or if you're a Mac user, you can find the same training at my website, scrappersguide.com.